Hello everyone, welcome back to Approaches to Research. We're still on Section 9, Historical and Legal Research. I'm talking about my biography of Eva Braun and authenticity. In historical research, one of the things we have to think about is can we believe what we're reading? Can we believe what we're seeing? Can we believe what we're handling? Is this really historically accurate? And today I'm going to um, talk about Eva Braun's journal. It's often called her diary. I prefer the word uh, journal. Um, we could argue about that if you like. But um, let's look at it first. Here's a photograph of it. Now it's a black and white photograph. It's actually tan, uh, tan leather. Uh, here's what it looks like inside. Now, uh, you can see that it's kind of hard to read, especially if you don't speak German. And what she's done here, Eva Braun, is see over here, fourth, and it looks like a two. That would be, I can't really see it from here, or a three that's, um, for the month. So that's uh, what it looks like inside. Now, why is it interesting? Well, I'll tell you from a historical standpoint, at least if you're writing a biography uh, of Eva Braun, um, it covers her life from 6 February 1935, which was her 23rd birthday, and um, goes up to 28th May 1935, where she records that she was planning uh, to take her own life. There are only 11 entries, that is, entries for 11 different days covering these months. Only 22 pages. She talks about meetings with Hitler, uh, messages from Hitler, meeting other friends, doing other things, um, her work a little bit. A lot about her feelings. Let me give you some examples. Here's part of what she wrote on 6 February. I've reached the happy age of 23, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm happy. At the moment I most definitely am not. And then after goes on quite long, um, she writes that she's going to go out to dinner with her friend Hertha Schneider. That was her best friend um, up to the end of Eva Braun's life. Here's another entry, 4th March. I am again mortally unhappy since I can't write to him. This book must serve to assuage my pain. Um, I notice I forgot to put closed quotes on that, but I'll do that after, afterwards. Um, so she's saying again she's unhappy. Here we are a, a month later. As a biographer, that um, is important. 11th March, I only wish I would fall deathly ill for at least eight days to take my mind off him. Ooh. Now, it sounds pretty dramatic, but it um, could be serious. It could be depression. Here's 28th May. I'm sorry, 11th um, uh, March. Let's finish. I'm going to buy sleeping powder again. Ooh, that... Uh, it concerns me when I read that. It always puts me into a kind of trance and stops my mind from racing. So she's having these recurring thoughts, right? 28th May, if I don't receive a response by 10 tonight, I'll take my 25 pills. So these must be sleeping pills. And just drift, drift off quietly. Dear God, let me hear from him today. Tomorrow will be too light. I've decided to take 35 pills. All right. Now, so she must have more. This time I'm going to make sure, dead sure. And in fact, she did take them. Okay, this time, she says. Now, that um, signals to me that, that she's suffering from uh, severe depression. And probably that no one else is um, concerned about her, at least she has that feeling. Nobody else seems to be noticing it. 
So from a historical standpoint, for one writing a biography, bi biography of Eva Braun, uh, this is important. By the way, we know that she tried to kill herself three times. The last time she succeeded. So um, this this is important. Now, what if it's not authentic? Um, we believe that it was taken by Ilsa's sister, who uh, who found her passed out, and Ilsa uh, told people no, Ilsa, that uh, Ilsa had torn out the pages about the suicide, but. I have actually had the journal in my hands and I page through all the pages there's doesn't look like anything's been torn out and most definitely these pages that I've just um, summarized to you in English they're they're definitely bound in the journal a little bit uh, confusing now, the um, reports in German say that it was confiscated by the U.S. Army. Uh, we know from other reports that at least uh, uh, Greta, the other sister of Eva Braun, sold things to American soldiers um, for alcohol, for money to buy alcohol. and uh, So maybe this was sold? Um, I don't know. It, but it's not um, <laughs> some German... Uh, uh, authors, including a biographer, uh, writes that uh, the the journal is in Koblenz um, in Germany. It's absolutely not. Um, I went to the United States to to Maryland and uh, College Park, Maryland, and that's where it is um, and has been. It's in the custody of the National Archives and Records Administration. Washington D.C. is the central office. But there's bus service that will take you from that building up to College Park, Maryland. Uh, by the way, Maryland w was named originally the uh, colony after the wife of James, King James, the one who lost his head, literally lost his head, right? That guy. And the mother of Charles, of, of, um, did I say Charles? Or Charles I. Um, uh, uh, wife of Charles I and mother of Charles II. But anyway, so you go up to Maryland and then uh, you fill out an application, wait, you get a, a time that you have to come back and then somebody goes down into the cellar into these archives um, and will bring it up to you and um, put they put on these white gloves and carry it. But they actually put it down in front of me and I just turned it with the pages with my hands. So Maybe that was a break in, in uh, protocol. I believe that I was the only biographer, at least, who looked at it since Naren Gun, G-U-N, who wrote the first biography of Eva Braun. At least that is according to the records, because at the archive they keep a record of the people who have, have uh, viewed um, everything. Uh, that's kept in these secure places, and there was no one else entered, which doesn't mean that someone else I I I at the National Archives look didn't look at it. Okay, that doesn't mean that. But as far as biographers go, I don't think that any of the others literally looked at it. If they had, uh, they would have mentioned that it's written in pencil. Nobody else says that. Um, it's kind of strange, uh, I would think. We know that Eva Braun would write, before she wrote to Hitler, she would write out in pencil what she was going to write. And then she would put it in ink. So maybe this was that type of thinking for her, that this is something that's not permanent. It's just helping her get through the day, is my, is my guess. Um, now, let's look at a kind of a strange thing here. Let me go back to the uh, journal, and you see the writing that's kind of wavy like that, and up and down and like this. That's called uh, Sutalin. And if you look down here at the one I just showed you, this says uh, Eva down here, and it's written to Ilse, um, Eva's sister. And it has different handwriting. 
this handwriting on this postcard is what they call in German Latin handwriting. It um, was introduced by the National Socialists to modernize the style of writing that was also called um, the German New, uh, New German Writing or something like that. Um, so that this this Sutalin, let me go down, oh, what's this? Well, that's the other side. That's kind of cute, but <laughs> kind of scary. Uh, now, uh, Joach, uh, Anton Joachim Stalin, our, an outstanding historian, uh, wrote a very good book called Hitler's Liste, Hitler's List, and in which he uh, goes through Hitler's Christmas list and writes a little biography about each person right mentioned in um, Hitler's Christmas list list and uh, Joachim Stoller in this book claims that the journal is a forgery and he does that on the basis of comparing writing samples and by the way <laughs> it would seem pretty obvious that two people were involved wouldn't it we just looked at uh, writing from Eva Eva Braun and it looked much different from the journal right the reason for that is that many people, because I've talked to some, who, who've, uh, including uh, my, my wife's grandmother and great-grandmother, um, employed two types of writing. Uh, most just stuck with their old-style Sutalin, which was taught in German schools from 1915 to 1940, when the National Socialists introduced reforms. And what Eva uh, Braun did is learned this new style of writing. But we find even postcards from Eva Braun in the Sutalin um, script, so that she was actually using both kinds of writing, which was not all that uh, unusual. Now, the fact that she's using the modern style uh, actually is an indication of her loyalty the na to the National Socialist Movement. She's She's being modern, right? She's uh, keeping up with the times. So uh, that um, is not a reason to reject the, uh, uh, the um, journal as being not authentic. Um, but here are some reasons that when we are looking at historical uh, creations, artifacts, writings, even um, paintings, they'll talk about provenance. Um, what we'd, we'd look here is at things like this. Why would Ilse sign a formal declaration that the journal is authentic? Now, it might be that uh, Ilse wanted to sell it and got a better price. In other words, it wasn't confiscated, right? It, it was sold. That, that's possible. But who would have, other than um, Ilse, who would have a motive for forging uh, a journal that's so short? I mean, why does it only cover a few months? And why is it mostly uninteresting? Why would anybody, why would anybody do that? Um, much less uh, Ilse, if she's the, the author of this forgery. And um, how could um, the author the, the forger uh, copy the, the handwriting so well. Now, it could be that uh, Ilse's handwriting was a lot like uh, Eva Braun's. Um, how could the author, uh, the forger, construct, um, uh, reconstruct Eva's uh, activities and thoughts? Ilse wasn't even living um, at home with uh, Eva Braun at the time. So, it's unlikely that somebody forged this. We can't be sure, but in my opinion, uh, everything in the journal rings true with uh, Eva Braun, with her surroundings, with the meetings with Hitler. There's other ways uh, that I've been able to find that um, much of the um, information that is in the journal can actually be co corroborated. So. Um, I'm sure that this is Eva Braun's journal. All right? Thank you very much.